Great to see you here. My name is Luke de Custer. I'm presenting you the videos from the Custer Academy about project management. If you're here for the first time, well, this is the third video in a series of three. So it would be interesting to review the first and the second video before you review this one. Also, for those who are new, do not forget to subscribe to the channel so you will be updated on all the interesting videos we are posting. Like I said, this is the third video in a series and the series about precedent diagramming. So we are looking at the different ways to do precedence diagramming and the reason is that I see in many posts that people are not really comfortable and that they are sometimes mixing different methods to calculate the start and the finish times of a project. The first video in this series was about the activity on the arrow method, how we created an arrow diagram using the precedence information of the activities. The second video we were applying this, the same information on the precedence diagramming method and calculating the early start, early finish, late start and late finish of a series of activities. We did that in two ways. First of all, we started the calculation from zero. The first point we measured, we started from is zero. We're using the coordinates. So we start from zero, we calculate the duration of the activities and the duration of the final project. The next step was to do the same, but we start from one. So we are not counting the coordinates anymore. We are counting the ordinal numbers. We are counting the days. Both methods are equivalent, although there are some differences when we look at the results of the calculations. And in the table here, I have summarized these results for the early start and the early finish positions of the activities. A, D and G are on the critical path and in both cases the critical path is the same. The final duration is 14. Here we can say when we start from zero that the duration is 14 and here we have 14 periods that it takes to complete the project. Now when we look at the early starts we see that there is a slight difference because we calculate differently. In the start from zero, we're using the coordinate line, we're using the coordinates from 1 till 15 or till 14 in our case, while in the other element, we're counting the days. So when we look at the days here, from 0 to 1, that's day 1. From 1 till 2 is day 2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I continue, 13, 14, and 15, but we don't need 15. So basically, when we look at early start, early finish for activity A, we use the coordinates, so we start from 0 up till 3, A takes 3 periods, and I should have drawn this in red, because it's a critical path, so let's color this to show to you that it's critical. So when I look at the start from one, we have one, two, three. We have different methods, but we see that the GAN chart shows the same information. Basically, there is no difference. The only thing if somebody asks you what's the early start of C, yeah, did you calculate from zero? Or did you start from one? There is a small difference. Typically, in the examples that we have today, since we're counting with days, for example, the method starting from one will typically be used. That's also the method you find in most of the programs that are like Microsoft Project or other project management software. We're counting in days. For B, from 0 till 2, or also from 1 till 2. And this is not critical. 
Now we have C from 3 till 5. C is also not critical and we also have the periods 4 and 5. You see the two elements are exactly the same. D, uh, D is very interesting because it's a critical path activity. We go from 3 till 8. So we go from 3, where is 8? 8 is here. And we have again an activity on the critical path. And in the method starting from 1, we go from 4 till 8. So basically the same result. E from 2 till 5, from 2 till 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here it is. And then finally we have F and G, F from 5 till 8. And the last one, G, is from 8 till 14. So we have 8 till 14 here. That should be 14, yes. Which is again critical. So here you see clearly whatever method I'm using, I'm in fact coming to the same result. The start from zero is in fact the same calculation method we were using in the activity on the arrow. There we were measuring from events. Zero is the start event for activity A and three is the end event. These are milestones related to the activity. And that's why we use this calculation method. Now in the more modern method in the precedence diagramming, I count with days or periods can be anything, but typically a day or a week. We see that the activity A starts on day one, three days, one, two, three. So a day is typically starting at eight or nine o'clock in the morning, going to five or six o'clock in the evening. The different methods are there. I I prefer the one start, the method starting from one, because this is more closer to a calendar. So if you have a problem drawing the different uh, network diagrams or doing the calculations, draw them on a calendar. A day is a day, a period can be a day, and you use it like that. There is no day zero, there is no week zero. There is no month zero. And of course, we don't have the year zero. The year or the point zero is a point in time. That's also why the third millennium started on the 1st of January 2001 and not 2000. Look at the movie from Stanley Kubrick, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Now, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. We have a lot more videos related to project management. Subscribe to the channel, you will get more information. Share this with the people who need it. And if you have questions, of course, put them in the comments and I will come back to you. Or I may decide to make some movies where I will combine all the different questions. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and bye bye.